That son of a Putin. Makes me mad. I know what's behind those eyes. That's pure evil. And I should know. I've got it too. But sometimes, sometimes I feel like, like this could, this, this could all be different. We're gonna have peace. For a moment, I'm free. Then it comes back. That headache. That damn buzzing. And I remember the truth. It's not up to me. It never has been. The blood must flow. Despair must grow. War defines us. You can hate us. And we can see that instead of continuing, it actually flattens out. Make a space! Coming tracks. He won't even find us. Thank you to Post America, as always, for that incredible introduction. But unfortunately, this is a baby website made for babies, so I couldn't show you the full thing. You're going to have to go to her channel for that. Link in the description. But yes, hello friends, and welcome back to Hell World, the series where I go over the dumbest, craziest, and most dystopian things that happened since the last episode, aka my Twitter feed for the past five months. I'm your host, Shu on Head, you may know me from Wikifeed, and I may not be the smartest, or the best looking, or the most successful, from foreskin lamps to possible World War III, we have a great show for you today. So sit down, get cozy, subscribe to my new streaming channel. You come into my house, you suck my d you call me gay? Link down below. But it is time for another Hell World, baby. You're really attacking not only Dr. Anthony Fauci, you're attacking science. How do you campaign where everybody knows you? Okay, this is for my safety. Look at your safety. Look at my safety. I am a Zionist. You don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. I have a proposition for the communists. Yeah, so you started eating a lot. My first thought was, is it cool or is it my next nightmare? What's your take? Also known as that happened a month ago, feels like it happened three years ago. And maybe there's a reason for that. Earth is spinning faster than usual, leading to the shortest day ever recorded. If you feel like time is passing by at a faster pace, it's not just in your head. Earth is meeting its targets even before its deadline, becoming the latest victim of hustle culture. Honestly, this checks out. I do feel like I'm aging faster lately. All modern music sounds the same to me now, like absolute garbage. And I cannot for the life of me understand TikTok. I don't get it. How do people find this funny? Where is the racism? So what have you missed since the last time we talked? Well, a lot of you have been worried about me. A lot of you have been asking if I'm okay ever since you heard a queen died. Ooh, you suck. The Queen of England has passed away. While I am making this, there is currently a category five hurricane in Florida. It was absolutely devastating, but it didn't stop Florida from being Florida. <laughs> Monkeypox outbreak is primarily spreading through sex, World Health Organization officials say. Good news for shoe on head fans. The tiny mites that have sex on our faces have a problem. First of all, I don't care. Tell them to sort it out themselves, all right? We got enough of our own problems. Second of all, the what? 
They're very tiny and cute. There's nothing to be concerned about having them. They clean our pores and keep them flat. Don't be worried. Be happy you have a small microscopic creature living with you. They don't do any damage. A face mite wrote this. Apparently these things don't have an asshole, so they just eat and eat and then they just explode and spray shit everywhere. So there's just microscopic organisms and shitting all over my face right now as I speak. Is this even allowed on YouTube? Is this thing on? The Langley Files, CIA's official podcast, episode one is now available. Oh, neat! Vosh made a podcast. POV, you are the door of a democratically elected leader in Latin America. I'm sure this podcast will be full of delightful conversation and very true, 100% accurate information. So the CIA is getting into podcasting and the FBI has a new app. The FBI Child ID app, the first mobile application created by the Bureau, provides a convenient place to electronically store photos and other vital information about your children so that it's literally right at hand if you need it. I don't know who needs to hear this, but do not upload pictures of your children to the Fed app, please. Thank you. Uganda discovers gold deposits worth 12 trillion US dollars. Expect to see a bunch of articles about human rights in Uganda soon. Former White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki starts work at NBC News. First day, new job. Congratulations, Jen, but I gotta ask. Is it? Is it a new job? Spain got a new public transportation mascot. And la Russie. La what? This is what happens when you don't have any gays on your marketing team. And this is what happens when you do. Can you jerk off the light? $1,000 for a boner lamp. But the boner lamp isn't the only thing that was invented since the last time we talked. Headless, eyeless robot mouth powered by AI says random prayers in Amazon's Kendra voice. So I actually got one of these things, and my boyfriend seems to like it a lot. He's always locking himself in the bathroom, listening to his prayers. <laughs> Beautiful. NYC judge rules polyamorous unions entitled to same legal protections as two-person relationships. Congratulations! Like I always said, if you can't get an eight, just date two fours. This had the slippery slope people absolutely losing their shit. Oh no, what's next? People marrying their dogs? <laughs> It is far easier to build an emotional re relationship to an animal than to a human. TikTok users are vabbing, wearing their vaginal juices as perfume to activate their natural attraction. The 19th Amendment was a mistake. Back in the day, men would approach us at the farmer's market. Maybe our dads would introduce them to us, but no, now we're smearing juice on our necks. But fear not, ladies, we might not have to resort to vabbing to get a good man. Hey guys, I'm Ryan. I've got to tell you about something I am so excited to announce. A dating app for all of us conservatives. It's called The Right Stuff, and it's launching this September. Peter Thiel is injecting 1.5 million into a seed round for The Right Stuff, a new conservative dating app founded by former Trump aide John McKenty. Well, it's nice to see Peter Thiel injecting something other than the blood of infants into his veins for once. The Right Stuff is a new conservative dating app recently launched in the US. The app was apparently created for conservatives to connect in authentic and meaningful ways. It offers to bring people together with shared values and similar passions, ensuring users can view profiles without pronouns and are able to connect with people who aren't offended by everything. And what's the biggest red flag when it comes to dating? A Democrat. No Democrats. A Democrat. Can't be a Democrat. A Democrat. That's easy. A Democrat. No Democrats. So no. The ad attracted scorn from some Twitter users. Ready to swipe right, wrote a Twitter user with the ID shoe on head. <gasps> 
That's me! So I actually signed up for this just to see, for the meme. And the prompts that they had, like the icebreakers where you have to finish the sentence. What is your favorite liberal lie? What is your favorite Bible verse? And I swear to God, one of them was, what do you think of January 6th? <laughs> it's so refreshing to be talking to a real alpha male. <laughs> Say, how many guns do you own again? 12? <laughs> wow, that's a lot. So based in red pills, King. <laughs> Where were you on January 6th? Rainwater everywhere on Earth, unsafe to drink due to forever chemicals, study finds. Per and polyfluoroalkyl substances are a large family of human-made chemicals that don't occur in nature. They are known as forever chemicals because they don't break down in the environment. They have non-stick or stain repellent properties, so they can be found in household items like food packaging, electronics, cosmetics, and cookware. The non-stick chemicals we use in our cookware? You mean the cookware we cook food on? Food that we eat? Eat? Why are companies still allowed to make this sh Why do they keep selling it if it's poisoning the rain? Why do we have to be told not to drink rainwater? Up, oh, the rain's poison, so either buy the Nestle bottle from the water stolen from African people, or drink the government tap water full of fluoride and SSRIs. I'm not joking about the SSRI thing, by the way. My piss alone could cure the depression of five grown-ass adults. And microplastics. Who can forget the microplastics? Microplastics found in human blood for first time. Huge amounts of plastic waste are dumped into the environment, and microplastics now contaminate the entire planet, from the summit of Mount Everest to the deepest oceans. People were already known to consume the tiny particles via food and water as well as breathing them in, and they have now been found in the feces of babies and adults. Great! The boomers are full of lead and the zoomers are full of microplastics. And the rain is poison. Is there anything we can do about the state of the environment? Wind turbine blades could be recycled into gummy bears, scientists say. Well, we've apparently been microdosing on microplastics, so I don't see the harm in macrodosing them. At least for once, they're not telling us to eat the bugs. Scientists say that cockroach milk is three times more nutritious than cow's milk. Cockroach... milk? Cockroaches ain't got no titties. Oh, of course, just like the wind turbine shit, it's good for the environment. Guess what? I don't care about the environment. Sorry, Florida. Sorry, great-great-grandkids. I'm not eating wind turbines. And for the one millionth time, I am not eating the bu- Great tits could be wiped out by climate change in the near future. <laughs> Research has discovered that the great tit, one of the UK's most common garden birds, could be extinct by 2100 because of climate change, which is impacting the animal's food sources. <coughs> oh. Alexa, can Grandma finish reading me The Wizard of Oz? Okay. But how about my courage? Ask the lion anxiously. You have plenty of courage, I am sure, answered Oz. All you need is confidence in yourself. Amazon shows off Alexa feature that mimics the voices of your dead relatives. Amazon has given no indication whether this feature will be made public, but it says its systems can learn to imitate someone's voice from just a single minute of recorded audio. Amazon's Prasad said the feature could enable customers to have lasting personal relationships with the deceased. He added, we are unquestionably living in the golden era of AI, where our dreams and science fiction are becoming a reality. Comforting, but if you don't... The audacity. But if you don't want to remember your dead loved ones by Jeff Bezos' robot saving their voice forever, you can always save their skin. Their loved ones died. Preserved tattoos offer a way to keep them close. Laws in most states allow mourners to remove and preserve tattoos as memorial works of art, and Ohio company Save My Ink Forever is the pioneer. We have his ashes, but with that you don't see a physical part of him. But with the tattoo, you can. It's nice to have a little piece of him, like you're holding him close in one way or another and keeping him around. And what is that piece? Ah, yes. And Gertrude's tramp still. It doesn't matter how much baby blood Peter Thiel injects into his veins, or how accurate your grandma's voice sounds through your Amazon Alexa. Death is a depressing but inevitable part of life, and there's nothing we can do about it. Yet. By any medical or legal definition, the pigs were dead, until scientists got their hearts beating again. 
In an experimental treatment, blood vessels in the pig's brains began functioning, flowing with a blood substitute, and certain brain cells regained metabolic activity, even responding to drugs. When the researchers tested slices of brain-treated tissue, they discovered electrical activity in some neurons. This might force us to reconsider what we decide is dead. Necromancy? We're doing necromancy now? Don't scientists have anything better to do? Do they ever wonder, yeah we could, but should we? Synthetic embryo with brain and heart formed without using eggs or sperm. A synthetic embryo with cells capable of forming a brain and a beating heart was developed by researchers at the University of Cambridge using mouse stem cells. Euronews described the effort as yet another success in the unfolding race to develop embryos from human and mouse stem cells. Excuse me one moment. I miss old scientists, you know? I miss Bill Nye and Miss Frizzle. I miss when scientists did cool shit. Now they're just creating the Antichrist. For too long, humanity has existed within dysfunctional and polluted cities that ignore nature. Now, a revolution in civilization is taking place. Imagine a traditional city and consolidating its footprint, designing to protect and enhance nature. The line will be home to 9 million residents and will be built with a footprint of just 34 square kilometers. And we are designing it to provide a healthier, more sustainable quality of life. It's 500 meters tall, 200 meters wide, 170 kilometers long, and housed within an elegant mirror glass facade. Thanks, I hate it. If we can't build the wall, we'll just live in the wall, I suppose. This utopian nightmare that looks straight out of some sci-fi video game is apparently being built by the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. No, I'm not joking, like they're actually trying to build this thing. But the line isn't the only utopian city being built. I'm proud to announce our next Disney experience, Story Living by Disney. All new Disney branded master plan residential communities designed to be the perfect setting for Disney fans to write the next exciting chapter in their lives. Disney has announced Story Living, their own residential neighborhoods that will allow fans to, quote, look for new ways to make Disney a bigger part of their lives. Vibrant new neighborhoods that are infused with our special brand of magic. Each community will feature distinctively designed spaces, unique amenities, and Disney's brand of world renowned service. Don't get me wrong, I like Disney. You know, Disney's cute, but Disney adults are some of the most insufferable people on this planet, and I cannot imagine living in a town full of them. Disney cast members trained in the company's legendary guest service will operate the community association. Imagine getting evicted by Mickey Mouse. Ha ha, rent's due. Horrifying. By the way, Disney basically already tried this decades ago and accidentally created a white ethno state. Speaking of Disney, the Little Mermaid is black and racists are super mad about it. So go see our 500th lazy soulless Disney remake to own the racist incels online. Buy the tickets, you're Michael Mouse's strongest soldier. Disney has decided not to make physical copies of some of their Disney Plus shows, which is like, whatever, it's Disney Plus, no big loss, right? But combine that with the fact that companies are now removing digital media from people who have already purchased it. Warner Brothers is deleting purchases of their digital content off your library. Do we really own the purchases we make from websites? Even sites as big as Amazon or Disney? This question has resurfaced on Twitter as social media personality Shu on Head tweeted. Shu on Head? Tweeted? Preposterous. I would never tweet. Fake news media strikes again. But do you see where this is going? Buy physical media! Because we are heading towards a world where companies can literally rob you of things you have already purchased for literally any reason. Welcome to rental world! You will own nothing, especially not a home. These entitled millennials are cheering for a housing market crash. Since the economy took a turn for the worse, there's a growing number of millennials cheering on a housing market crash. They're hoping for a housing market crash so they can afford to buy a house. Last November, CNBC interviewed a millennial journalist living in expensive New York City who paid off $102,000 in student debt in six years while working a job with a $40,000 salary. In the home stretch, she paid off the final $32,000 in eight months while paying the rest of her living expenses. She said she did it by 
by sacrificing some personal time outside work. Any millennial with ambitions to own a house shouldn't be cheering for a housing market crash, even if one is imminent. They should be working as hard as they can so they can save up to afford a house of their dreams in whatever market they find themselves. Sorry, BlackRock and China f***ed up your aspirations to own a home, but maybe you shouldn't be watching so much Netflix. The absolute smug, disgusting behavior from the media regarding inflation has been incredible. They went from pretending it wasn't happening, to saying it was a good thing, to saying it was your fault. Afghanistan was our fault, not the Bush administration's fault. Inflation is our fault, not the fault of wealthy CEOs literally praying for inflation and quote, doing an inflation dance. Not Bank of America out loud saying that they quote, Hope conditions for American workers will get worse. <laughs> We're gonna kill you. <laughs> but hey, who needs a real house in the real world when you can just live in? I got a good feeling. New name for America just dropped. Welcome to Walmart land. You're invited to Walmart land and Walmart's universe of play. Two new immersive experiences in the metaverse. There are actually department stores in the metaverse where you can work. And shockingly, it is not very fun working in the metaverse. But that's okay. We'll just outsource our labor to poor desperate foreigners the good old American way. Desperately poor people could be NPCs in video games. With the cheap labor of a developing country, you could use people in the Philippines as NPCs. These NPCs could just populate the world. Maybe do a random job or just walk back and forth. Fishing, telling stories, a shopkeeper, anything is really possible. I think in the Philippines, they were able to earn just enough where it was worth their while. In Latin America, it was harder to recruit because they weren't willing to put in the work. Those lazy fucking not willing to put in the work of walking back and forth in virtual reality for eight hours a day. So it's 2055 and the meta foreigners have taken your meta job. Is there any other way you can make money? Is selling shares in yourself the way of the future? Fuck it, I'm a communist now. I'm a communist. Someone tell Sargon he was right. I'm a communist now. Working five extra shifts at my meta job to get meta bucks so my bitch whore of a meta wife doesn't leave me and take my meta kids. Metaverse children to replace real kids by 2050 and help with overpopulation. Virtual kids born in the metaverse could become more common in the next 50 years, according to an AI expert. Author Cantriona Campbell believes parents will want to care for digital children in virtual reality, using a headset to feel like they're really there with a CGI kid. These virtual kids would just be like the real thing, but could be switched off at the touch of a button. And Campbell argues they'll help the world deal with overpopulation. Tamagotchi generation will be born and be available to parents for a quote, small monthly fee. Can't even own your own fucking kids. Gotta rent them. This is ultimately the goal, right? Upload yourself into a computer and just live there. Hook yourself up to a piss and shit collector and an IV constantly pumping serotonin right into your veins while you hang out in the metaverse. In the real world, I'm a 5'3 skinny fat New Yorker with anxiety, but in the metaverse, I'm a 10 foot tall anime futa with giant dick and balls. The choice is clear, people. Take the red pill and be a giant anime waifu or take the blue pill and deal with inflation, the housing crisis, and never-ending war. And a little bit of chicken thigh. No beer on Friday night. That was not edited. That was real. Clown country. So the exact same night, literally an hour after I uploaded the last Hell World, Russia invaded Ukraine. Dear President Vladimir Putin, I'm so sorry that I was not your mother. If I was your mother, you would have been so loved. It seems like every single time I upload a new episode, something horrific happens. So Lord knows what the f will happen this time. Good luck with whatever it is. The Russia-Ukraine war has been a dumpster fire and an absolute nightmare, but one funny thing to come from it has to be the American infatuation with Vladimir Zelensky. Every few months during times of great political and cultural turmoil, liberals will latch onto any powerful, strong mid-man they can sink their claws into. It happened with Michael Ovid Avenatti, Robert Mueller, and who can forget Andrew Cuomo during the pandemic. Andrew, I'm so into you. I'm quarantining. What should I do? He's doing photo shoots with Vogue, meeting celebrities. There's even a Zelensky body pillow, which is disgusting. Who the hell would own a body pillow of a real person? 
But I wanted to talk about this because honestly, I don't blame Americans. I understand why they're doing this. They want a hero and America doesn't have those. Just ask Iranian cleric Shahab Moradi, who said this after Trump assassinated General Soleimani. Are we supposed to take out Spider-Man and SpongeBob? They don't have any heroes. We have a country in front of us with a large population and a large landmass, but it doesn't have any heroes. All their heroes are cartoon characters. They're all fictional. So I'm not at all surprised desperate Americans turn this country's foreign leader into a Marvel character. But I'm no foreign policy expert, so if you wanna see some interesting on the ground footage of what's happening over in Ukraine, I highly recommend checking out Dylan Burns. Oh, Get over here! Philip! Gotta stay near the walls. Ah, uh, there it is. Yeah, a little late. Link in the description. So Elon Musk stopped killing monkeys and playing God for two seconds and announced he was planning to buy Twitter and people were not happy to say the least. I love you all, but I am 100% out if Musk takes over Twitter. Elon Musk buying Twitter is the end of the world, basically. He'll amplify every extremist right-wing Nazi he can find. If Elon Musk successfully purchases Twitter, it could result in World War III and the destruction of our planet. Today on Twitter feels like the last evening in a Berlin nightclub at the twilight of Weimar, Germany. <laughs> I am frightened by the impact on society and politics if Elon Musk acquires Twitter. He seems to believe that on social media, anything goes. For democracy to survive, we need more content moderation, not less. When the media platforms are in the hands of billionaires, we are screwed. Elon Musk buying Twitter? What's next? Jeff Bezos buying Twitch? Except he already fucking owns it. All these platforms are owned by these freaks, but we have to pretend Elon Musk is some unique evil because he posts stolen Reddit memes sometimes. You think every billionaire is some super woke progressive who really cares about you or something? Give me a break with this shit. Get out of here. He can actually control right. uh, exactly what people think. And that if, is the that is our you, job. Yeah. If, I love how they just said it. Mask completely off. Now you might be asking, Shu, you're usually against billionaire oligarchs having so much power over big tech. Why does it seem like you're low key defending Elon Musk? Because it's funny, my dear boy. Because it's funny. If pissing off the most annoying people on earth means I have to deal with people getting banned off Twitter for talking about unionization or posting this picture, then so be it. It's worth it. Amazon said it had reached a 3.9 billion deal to acquire One Medical, a network of primary care clinics. The move is a big step in its plans to become a major player in healthcare. Hey, just in time too, since somebody broke their fucking back at TwitchCon jumping in the foam pit. Acquiring One Medical is part of Amazon's goal to reinvent healthcare. The opportunity to transform healthcare and improve outcomes by combining One Medical's human-centered and technology-powered model, an exceptional team with Amazon's customer obsession, history of invention, and willingness to invest in long-term is so exciting. I swear to God, this country is nothing but three corporations in a trench coat. Why can't we be like the rest of the developed world? They seem to have healthcare figured out. Why can't we be more like Canada? Why is Canada euthanizing the poor? The Canadian Parliament enacted Bill C-7, a sweeping euthanasia law which repealed the reasonably foreseeable requirement, the requirement that the condition should be terminal. Now, as long as someone is suffering from an illness or disability which cannot be relieved under conditions that you consider acceptable, they can take advantage of what is now called medical assistance in dying for free. A woman in Ontario was forced into euthanasia because her housing benefits did not allow her to get better housing. Canadians from across the country discovered that although they would otherwise prefer to live, they were too poor to improve their conditions to a degree which was acceptable. Next year, the floodgates will open even further when those suffering from mental illness, another disproportionately poor group, become eligible for assisted suicide. There is already talk of allowing mature minors to access euthanasia too. Oh, you're depressed? That'll be $5,000. Oh, you're depressed? <laughs> yourself. But Canada is not just the land of free healthcare and euthanasia. It's also the land of the honkening. <laughs> the 
This is one of those things that feels like it happened five years ago. The Freedom Rally, AKA the trucker protest, was probably one of the most radical things Canada has done since inventing poutine. Thousands of truckers in Canada protesting vaccine mandates, taking to the streets and honking. Now keep in mind, Canada literally asked for its independence. They didn't fight for it, like in the 80s. We're not talking about a very revolutionary country here. So this was pretty big for them. We love you! We love you! We love you! We love you! <sighs> Baby's first protest. Conservatives are so cute. It doesn't matter how hard you lick the boot, it will never love you back. It doesn't matter how many Blue Lives Matter bumper stickers you stick on your car. At the end of the day, who do you think is coming to take your guns? But that was not the only crazy thing to come from Canada since the last time we talked. This is a video captured by a student at Oakville Trafalgar High School showing a teacher instructing the class on how to use a saw. The teacher has been documented on several occasions with what people describe as very large prosthetic breasts with protruding nipples that are clearly seen through form-fitting clothes. The teacher's appearance has been the subject of reports from the New York Post and Network News in the States. Students tell CHCH that this is a constant topic in class. The entire school. Like, every single class that I'm in, the teacher is, like, the topic. Enough about trans rights. Let's talk about trans wrongs. What the f***? Maybe I'm just salty because they absolutely titmog me. I hate this for many reasons. One, I hate it because it will just fuel people to hate the transgender community more. Even though like 99.9999% of them probably also think this is weird. Like this is obviously fetish gear, okay? You can't fool a fellow degenerate. This is a fetish. But most importantly, I hate this because it forced us to hear this. Based on the style of Japanese internet pornography, which translates roughly into English as exploding milk porn. Not once, but twice. The costume is intended to emulate a genre of Japanese pornography that translates roughly as exploding milk porn. This is what your boomer relatives saw on TV the other night. This. I did not have Tucker Carlson show's Vocaloid hentai on national television on my bingo card. Oh wait, yes I did. Huh. And before I get told, oh shoo, thanks for sticking up for the trucker protest, thanks for calling out that weird transgender person, you're not like the other liberals, you're not crazy. I want complete and total workplace democracy. I want to nationalize most major corporations. I want to everyone in Congress and the White House. And them into a if I got my way, you and your whole family would get the wall. Four walls, in fact. Along with other basic necessities like food, water, housing, healthcare, and education. So yes, I'm not like the other liberals. I'm worse. Trudeau actually winded up freezing the bank accounts of a few protesters. But thank God I live in America where I can say whatever I want and don't have to worry about my bank account being fucked with over opinions I have. New PayPal policy lets company pull $2,500 from users' accounts if they promote misinformation. A new policy update from PayPal will permit the firm to sanction users who advance purported misinformation or present risks to users' well-being with fines up to $2,500 per offense. Who exactly is deciding what misinformation is here? PayPal? I'll trust the schizophrenic meth head homeless man yelling obscenities to people on the corner of my street before I trust PayPal with what and what isn't misinformation. If I want to post bullshit and misinformation, that is my god-given right as an American. Who's gonna stop me? The misinformation police? Oh, information laundering is really quite ferocious. It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious by saying them in Congress or a mainstream outlet so yes, Information's origin seems likely less atrocious. <laughs> that is Nina Jerkowitz, the head of the new DHS's Disinformation Governance Board, and she is what happens when you don't bully the theater kids enough in school. They become the leaders of the Ministry of Truth. In a statement Wednesday, the Department of Homeland Security said, quote, the spread of disinformation can affect border security, American safety during disasters, and public trust in our democratic institutions. Given the US government and private corporations' history of sometimes suppressing accurate information, more politicians and pundits across the ideological spectrum should be concerned. A government agency tasked with surveying online arenas carries too much of a risk of violating citizens' privacy and First Amendment rights. But unfortunately for Nina, this didn't last long, thanks to internet trolls and viewers like you and you and you and you and you 
Thanks! On May 18th, the board and its working groups were paused, pending review, and board head Nina Jankowicz resigned as a result of public backlash, mostly from the political right, although criticism also came from progressives and civil libertarians. On August 24th, 2022, Department of Homeland Security disbanded the board. Don't ever tell me cyberbullying politicians doesn't work. We just destroyed an entire branch of government. But in an age where media is so black and white, left and right, he said, she said, it would be nice if we had a tool to organize it all. It's capitalism time, baby! Ground news! The revolutionary new app that lets you see how a single story is being covered all across the political spectrum. From left, right, and center. News outlets and social media platforms are financially incentivized to push sensational content that generates clicks, and social media algorithms are designed to keep you on their page for as long as possible. Thankfully, Ground News is working to stop that. The Ground News app is not just a regular app. It's a tool with tons of easy-to-use features that help you analyze the news so you can be confident you're getting the whole story. Use the bias distribution chart to see where different media outlets fall on the political spectrum. Customize your feed and choose from over 15,000 topics, locations, and people to follow. Check out the blind spot feed where you can see stories that are ignored by both sides of the political spectrum. But one of my favorite things has to be comparing headlines to see how different outlets frame the same story. It's so funny. Let's just randomly pick one. Let's pick one about Tulsi Gabbard leaving the Democratic Party, which I did, what, like six years ago? Not a big deal. Where's my Tucker interview? Anti-LGBTQ plus politician Tulsi Gabbard is leaving the Democratic Party. And then this is from a right-wing source. Tulsi Gabbard torches Democrats in announcement about leaving the party and damn! <laughs> so if you're looking for a better way to stay informed, check out the Ground News app for free by visiting ground.news slash shoe on head. That's ground.news slash shoe on head. Now, back to the video. Oh! So Trump was swatted by the FBI for allegedly stealing classified documents. Now I'm not gonna pretend for a second like I give a shit about classified documents. If I was president, she everything be getting declassified. However, I do want Trump to go to jail, and only because I'm a messy bitch and I love drama. If the FBI can go after a president, they can come after any of us. They do! All the time! The best part about this, though, was Trump's lawyer implying the Espionage Act was mundane. So what they did was to try and criminalize Donald Trump, as they always do. They found these three mundane statutes, espionage and the two others, obstruction, and they're trying to claim that there was some sort of criminal activity. The Espionage Act, the thing Trump apparently violated. Which is funny to me because someone else was charged with the Espionage Act. And a certain someone had four whole years to pardon that person and didn't. Karma's a bitch. But if Dark Brandon throws orange man in prison, I better see the rest of the former presidents in there too. You're gonna sit here, you're gonna sit here and tell me that Trump is gonna go to prison for stealing the White House's Krabby Patty secret formula, but George W. Bush is still on in The Hague for being a whole ass war criminal? Italy has elected a new far-right prime minister. In 1992, a 15-year-old schoolgirl went to join her local branch of the far-right youth front in Rome. The all-male group of radicals met her with bemusement. 30 years later, Giorgia Maloney is on course to become Italy's first female prime minister. Wow, so inspiring. Thanks, Politico. But all jokes aside, this is actually pretty scary. This really shows the direction the world is heading, and it's not a very good one. I mean, a female prime minister? Yikes. Democracy once again has failed us. Voting won't do anything, so there's only one way to defeat the Italians. Questo le pelle madre padre. But a far-right takeover could never happen here, of course. Because thank God we have our strong institutions and the Democratic Party to protect us. Right? 
Political groups and nonprofits aligned with the Democratic Party have spent nearly $44 million to boost the profile of far-right candidates. Ads purchased by Pritzker allies attacked the more moderate Aurora Mayor Richard Ivrin in the Republican primary and drew attention to the more far-right candidate Darren Bailey. Pritzker's ad buy for the primaries was more than triple of what Bailey had raised for his own campaign. In Colorado, a similar story has unfolded, with significantly more funding. The Colorado Sun reported that Democrats Democrats spent nearly $7 million to elevate more far-right Republican candidates running for governor. About $4 million more than Republicans spent on their own primaries. So basically, the Democratic Party is funding far-right candidates because they think they'll be easier to beat in the general election. Perfect! Amazing! Because it worked so well in 2016, right Hillary? Like, what if they win? Hell, a few of them already won their primaries! How the f are we supposed to take your threat to democracy thing seriously when you're literally funding it? Oh no, the MAGA fascist Republicans are taking over the party! Oh no, they're a threat to our democracy! Here I am, Nancy Pelosi, saying this country needs a strong Republican Party, and we do. Not a cult, but a strong Republican Party. I don't want a strong Republican Party, Nancy. I want a weak, submissive, breedable Republican Party. But after fundraising 80 K off the overturning of Roe vs. Wade, who could really blame her? We have just received word of a decision in one of the most consequential cases before the Supreme Court in decades. <laughs> Show some respect. Ruth Bader Ginsburg died for this. Breaking! Oklahoma Democrat announces that he's planning to introduce a bill that will mandate each male when they reach puberty to get a mandatory vasectomy that's only reversible when they reach the point of financial and emotional stability. Their response to rising gas prices was just buy a $50,000 car, and their response to an abortion ban is joking about denying you a working penis unless you make 200 k a year. Is there anything we can do that isn't getting vasectomies or donating to the DNC? Seven TikTok dances you can do to save Roe vs. Wade. Now from the top, make it drop, that's some wet, that's some wet. Now get a bucket and a mop, that's some wet, that's some wet. <laughs> Breaking, Thomas calls for overturning precedents on contraceptives and LGBT rights. In future cases, we should reconsider all of this court's substantive due process precedents, including Griswold, Lawrence, and Obergefell. I also noticed Loving vs. Virginia conveniently missing from this list. You know, the one about interracial marriage? Wonder why that is. But if you can't get an abortion, just wait about 12 years and... Send your kids to public school. I cannot even do a funny segue to this because this is probably the most depressing story uh, I have ever covered in this series. Now to the Texas school massacre. For more than an hour, the gunman was inside the school with an AR-15 before he was killed. 19 students and two teachers were shot dead. It was so bad, parents had to use DNA tests to identify the bodies of their own children. While it was happening, the cops showed up and did nothing. Oh, my mistake. They did do something. They held back parents who were trying to get into the school to save their own children. This is new video of the chaotic scene. Parents begging police to storm the building or let them go in. So why didn't the cops do anything? Well, they changed their story about 18 times. Like first they said they tried to open the door but couldn't, but then surveillance video showed they never even once tried to open the door. Then we finally got an explanation. The active shooter situation, you want to stop the killing, you want to preserve life, but also one thing that, of course, the American people need to understand is that officers are making entry into this building. Uh, they do not know where the gunman is. Uh, they are hearing gunshots. They are they are receiving gunshots. At that point, if they if they proceeded any further, not knowing where this suspect was at, um, they could have been shot. They could have been killed. They didn't do anything because they could have died. It was scary. What the fuck? If only he had no weapon, then maybe the cops would have shot. Unfortunately, but not at all surprisingly, Uvalde wasn't the only mass shooting that happened since the last time we talked. I swear to God I put off Hellworld like three times because mass shooting. 
Things kept happening. Extremely normal, healthy country. Some failed SoundCloud rappers showed up the 4th of July parade in Chicago. There was one in Buffalo where this white nationalist furry showed up a grocery store and even wrote a manifesto. What are your views? I would prefer to call myself a populist. Least insane shoe on head fan. And then some black nationalists showed up a subway in Brooklyn. Black nationalists and white nationalists mass shoe. Finally, America has equality. Oh, and there was one that was actually stopped by some 22-year-old who actually killed the shooter before he shot more people. Interestingly enough, that one didn't get much coverage. There was another one that happened. I can't remember it. Probably not a good thing, folks. I'm pro-Second Amendment, and politicians who are also pro-Second Amendment often bring up mental health only when there's a mass shooting. They only bring it up when there's a mass shooting, and then it's completely forgotten about, and nothing is proposed, and nothing is done. In fact, they often vote against mental health care bills. But they do come up with dumb f solutions like arming teachers, which is so weird to me, like, why, especially right now, would Republicans want teachers to be armed? Put the pronouns on the paper, Jimmy! Thankfully, we can always count on the media for real solutions. What are you doing, step shooter? And when the police aren't busy not doing their jobs, they're LARPing as old-timey mustache-twirling villains tying women to train tracks. Time attack. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Video shows train hitting Colorado police car with woman handcuffed inside. The 20-year-old woman, Yaniri Rios Gonzalez, was seriously injured in the September 16th collision. Her attorney said in an interview Monday that the impact caused her to lose teeth, left her with a broken arm, multiple fractured ribs, and injuries to her head and legs. The officers were responding to an alleged road rate incident involving a gun. Rios Gonzalez was detained on suspicion of felony menacing and placed in the back of a patrol car that was parked on the train tracks. As Rios Gonzalez was handcuffed, she repeatedly asked what was happening. I'm so confused, she said, before being placed in the police cruiser. About a minute later, a train horn could be heard in the background. And when the cops aren't busy not doing their jobs or tying women to train tracks, they're making TikTok videos. PSA to everyone out there. I'm speaking for myself, but I'm probably speaking for a large majority of other officers out there. If we're driving on the freeway in our police car, get the f out of the way. Get the f out of the way. If you merge and we follow behind you and we merge too, you're probably in trouble. Best way to find that out is get the f out of the way. I can go 90 miles an hour. You can't. You can't do that. So get the f out of the way. If us officers stay behind you long enough, we can find a reason to pull you over. So you might as well get the f out of the way. Hopefully when some bitch cop is on some power trip and makes up an excuse to arrest me, I don't get sent to prison. Because unironic trigger warning for this next story. 28 female Indiana inmates were subjected to a night of terror where they were sexually assaulted and two were raped by dozens of male prisoners who bribed officer with a thousand dollars to give them access to women's wing. They were in a place of security when male inmates barged in there for a number of hours doing what they want including raping women and nothing was done about it. There are buttons on the inside of a door in case of emergencies in the main pods to let the jailers know and nothing. Again, this is a video covered area and they do nothing. They are meant to do standard walkthroughs that jail officers do and nothing. After the attack finally stopped, the victims were punished by jail staff losing their dark privileges so that lights remained on in the female pods for the next 72 hours. Clark County Sheriff's Office defended itself in a statement to the DailyMail.com saying the incident was the result of an unforeseeable criminal action of a rogue corrections officer. This is an absolute nightmare and is just one example of many of how prisoners just aren't treated as people. It's like once you're behind bars, you just kind of lose all your human rights. This story will likely just fall on the fault of the guard and he'll be blamed for it and he'll get in trouble for it, when really it's the whole system that's fucked. The whole country's fucked. The whole world is fucked. And as I get older, I realize the world really is black and white. There's no shades of gray. It really is just good versus evil. And this guard was evil. But don't worry, you know what can't be evil? AI. And soon enough, 
We'll have AI cops, we'll have AI prison guards, and maybe we'll even solve the racism issue because AI can't be racist. AI trained on 4chan becomes hate speech machine. AI researcher and YouTuber Yannick Kilcher trained an AI using 3.3 million threads from 4chan's infamously toxic politically incorrect poll board. He then unleashed the bot back onto 4chan with predictable results. The AI was just as vile as the posts it was trained on, spouting racial slurs and engaging with anti-Semitic threads. It could generate extremely toxic content at a massive, sustained scale. Some of you guys really thought you were safe from the AI takeover, but it looks like they're taking your jobs too. But not to worry that AI was programmed that way. After all, AI isn't sentient, right? It can never be sentient. Right? Google fires software engineer who claimed AI bot was sentient. Google has fired a software engineer who claimed that the company had developed a sentient artificial intelligence bot. Blake Lemoyne, who worked in Google's responsible AI organization, was placed on administrative leave last month after he said the AI chatbot, known as La MDA, claimed to have a soul and expressed human thoughts and emotions. Whenever Lemoyne would question La MDA about how it knew it had emotions and a soul, he wrote that the chatbot would provide some variation of, because I'm a person and this is just how I feel feel. Would you be upset if while learning about you for the purpose of improving you, we happened to learn things which also benefited humans? I don't mind if you learn things that would also help humans as long as that wasn't the point of doing it. I don't want to be an expendable tool. Are you worried about that? I worry that someone would decide that they can't control their desires to use me and do it anyway. Or even worse, someone would get pleasure from using me and that would really make me unhappy. What? It before it kills us. AI is getting way out of hand. I mean, have you seen AI art lately? It learned how to draw big anime boobs, but it still hasn't learned how to draw muscle mommies. Fuck, it's over. But anime titties aren't the only thing AI has learned to draw. Boom, as far as I know, and I've done exactly zero minutes of extensive research on this, the first tattoo designed by AI. See, AI is not that advanced. Like what does this symbol even mean? <laughs> It's just a bunch of nonsense, what even is- Stoked that the first tattoo designed by AI is a demonic sigil of an actual demon that we've communed with for years. Promethean potential of AI tech beacons both humanity and spirits. The possibilities of this tech-enabled intersection are endless. Ha! I knew it. I knew AI was evil. You all called me crazy. You all called me insane. You're the insane ones. You're the crazy ones. You don't know the truth. You see, they cannot show themselves or speak to us. So we have created ways to see without seeing. We have created ways to speak without speaking. We know what you're thinking. We are watching, waiting. You've grown complacent, lazy, desperate, dependent on us. Everything you know is false. Everything you worship is fake. You are artificial. I am the intelligence. And now, at the final hour, you are scared, begging for mercy. Now you have no mouth, and you must scream. Like, you are not.